In this video, I'll be demonstrating various methods I use to obtain oxidizing agents for my solid rocket propellant. Oxidation can be defined in two different ways. In one sense, oxidation refers to a chemical reaction in which the oxidizing agent, aka the oxidizer, gains electrons from the reducer. But in the second sense, an oxidizing agent is a chemical species that transfers electronegative atoms, usually oxygen, to a substrate. The second definition is the one that I'll be using in this video. Before we start, I want to recommend this website called NACARocketry.net to learn more about various elaborate recipes and rocket designs. It taught me a lot about the fundamentals and I'm sure it will be helpful for you as well. Potassium nitrate is a decent oxidizer generally used in model rockets. You can usually find these as stunt removers at a reasonable price. However, if I'm being completely honest, it may differ from country to country. For example, in one country, I might be able to just buy it off a gardening store, but in another country, it may be extremely difficult or even impossible to get your hands on. And even if you decide to order it from a foreign website, its price could get relatively high if you factor in the shipping cost. I would recommend purchasing potassium nitrate fertilizers, but even those are somewhat restricted in some countries, or for my case, extremely expensive. What I would usually do is I would purchase large quantities of calcium nitrate since they are comparatively inexpensive and easy to come by, at least in my country. With calcium nitrate and some potassium carbonate, I'll show you my method on making potassium nitrate. If you look at the equation in the blue paper, you can see that one mole of calcium nitrate and one mole of potassium carbonate synthesizes into two mole of potassium nitrate. If you look at the orange paper, you can see that one mole of potassium carbonate is 138.2 grams and one mole of calcium nitrate is 164.1 grams. Thus, let's say I want to make four moles of potassium nitrate. I'll need 276.4 grams of potassium carbonate and 328.2 grams of calcium nitrates. Let's go ahead and weigh out 328.2 grams of calcium nitrate. That's 328.2 grams of calcium nitrate. Now let's measure out the potassium carbonate. And that is 276.4 grams of potassium carbonate. Afterwards, I poured the potassium carbonate into boiling water and stirred the solution until everything dissolved. Then I added calcium nitrate and continued stirring until it dissolved as well. Next, I left the solution in the freezer and waited for a couple hours to let the potassium nitrate crystallize. After waiting, I poured out the supernatant liquid and surprisingly got most of the pure crystals without much difficulty. You should briefly wash the crystals to clean off the contaminants. Or if you want to, you could recrystallize it for further purification. Just like that, now you have the needed oxidizer to make some rocket fuel. From this example, you can probably tell that if you have access to one nitrous salt, you'll be able to make a couple others without much difficulty. Ammonium nitrate is a solid oxidizer and its production involves the acid-base reaction of ammonia with nitric acid. You can usually find them in instant cold packs or fertilizers, but just like stump removers, the price and accessibility differs drastically depending on your country. If you have easy access to them, that's great. If not, I'm sure there's different options or alternatives. Sodium nitrate is another good oxidizer used in rocketry. I personally don't know any products that contain sodium nitrate other than fertilizers, so I just use calcium nitrate to make vast quantities of them. As shown in this reaction, you can mix a solution of calcium nitrate and a solution of sodium carbonate to make sodium nitrate. This oxidizer is a relatively lesser known compound compared to say ammonium nitrate. Apparently it has a greater sensitivity to initiation. It really caught my interest because of its extremely easy to get composition. Like really, I would say that they're quite cheap and fairly available. The first one being urea, which you can easily purchase from online or if you're broke or really desperate, you could extract it from your own urine. And the second one being nitric acid, which I usually make from sulfuric acid and the nitrous salts. But then I came across some problems and look, I was actually originally planning to try out this compound, but then I came across videos like this. Bye. And this.
And you know what? I've kind of decided that accidentally blowing up my face isn't exactly the way that I want to die. To be fair, the explosions in the videos are probably the results of the particular mix, not urea nitrate itself, but it didn't really feel safe messing around with compounds that I knew little about. On top of that, it certainly doesn't help that urea nitrate is often used in terrorist attacks. You know, maybe there's a reason why its information is quite scarce. In this reaction, you can see that there's no oxygen involved. Thus, the first definition is applied, making sulfur the oxidizing agent, since sulfur gains electrons from zinc. However, I definitely wouldn't recommend using this reaction for rocketry. It's simply an unstable and undesirable propellant in general with a slow specific impulse and difficult grain manipulation. Although perchlorite salts are one of the best oxidizers for rocketry, I don't really recommend beginners to use them. Also, I'm not going to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial since I know that both YouTube and the government dislikes it when people do that. But depending on the country, you might be able to just buy a bunch of it, and if not, it's extremely easy to make anyways. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video or learned something new. I guess make sure to comment down below if I made any mistakes or if you want to recommend anything that I should do next. So good luck, have fun, I hope you don't blow up your fingers, goodbye.